such a relationship with the media, so this woman has work cut out for her every day. <laughs> every day. <laughs> Please welcome, uh, in their first joint interview, Press White House Secretary Sarah Sanders. Thank you. And, and her dad, former Governor Mike Huckabee. Now, Mike, give him a hand. <laughs> We're going to talk to you about your show, but okay. we want to talk to Sarah first. So hang tight. Ladies <laughs> first. Cool. Cool. Okay. <laughs> but you know, I don't want to have to come over there now. <laughs> so you're not only, uh, you're only the third woman to serve as the White House press secretary, uh, and you're the, also uh, the first mom, the first mother the first to hold mother. the job. So when you get those calls, uh-oh, he's tweeting, <laughs> and it's 2 in the morning. Yeah. How do you do everything with the kids and trying to do your job and... Well, I'm already up. As a parent, you're up, you know, 24-7 <laughs> a day. So it's uh, an easy How transition. How old are your children, I should ask? Five, almost four, and two. So, yes. you are. They're in so, you are, you so, Wow. Little babies. Right. So, so they perfectly have prepared me to deal with the White House press corps. I'm used to answering this. <laughs> oh, I get to answer the same. The I get to answer Come the on same now. question all day long. Uh, and I, I've gotten pretty good at saying no. So I think my kids have been a perfect you know what uh, you foundation for You know what you say all the job. time? You always say, I'll get back to you. But what is that about? Why do you keep saying, I'll get back to you? Well, I, I mean, a, and a lot of times I get back to the individual reporter. It may not be on camera, but oh. uh, I have reporters in and out of my office all throughout the day. Uh, also, as you know, um, we most of us live with a device in our hand. And so I'm in contact with them 24 right. Uh, 24 hours, seven days a week, uh -huh. constantly uh, responding to different questions. And so a lot of that may not be done in the briefing room, but it's done uh -huh. uh, at another time throughout I have, the day. I have to say, Sarah, that I'm surprised you... Who, who approved you coming here? The mooch? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> you know? I mean, is that why he was fired? <laughs> I'm shocked that you're here, both of you, even though you were my favorite Republican. Was. Back in the well, day. She um, actually whispered to me before we started that I'm now her favorite oh. Republican. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I think it, it works. Oh. It's still in the family. Okay. But Sarah, you ran your father's <laughs> presidential campaign last year. Did he give you any advice when you got this job offer? Uh, it's the same advice that he's given me in any job I've ever had, and that's to always be honest and always be myself. And if you kind of live by those two things, you really don't have to worry about too much else. I try to go into every day uh, with that in mind and never veer from that. And so far, it's, I think, served me pretty well. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, let me talk to you, Mike, because, yes, you are my favorite Republican. <laughs> and so that's why, you know, uh, Trump, his, the things that he says about women are just horrendous. And we all know that, so let's not pretend that he hasn't said some horrifying things about women. Okay? We know that. Just nod. You don't have to say anything. Just nod, because you know it's true. Blink. Having said that, how can you let your daughter defend him? Well, he's also empowered a lot of women. I mean, he's given my daughter... An incredible opportunity. Anecdotal. As no, look at the women that he has hired, not only uh, in the White House, but also the women that he's hired in the private sector. First ever to give a woman the opportunity to be a contractor on a huge Manhattan job. I mean, you know, when people say, "Oh, he's this," but look at his history. You know, if people say, "Oh, he's a racist," well, he's been on this show many times. Did yes, you ever and I send him? it to him to his face. Well, but, but look, he's not a He does have a history, Governor, of, of uh, with his father precluding people of color from living in his buildings. I mean, it's a well-documented history it's of there. racism. How can you sit here and say he's I'm not a racist? I know, too, that he is the guy that opened up Mar-a-Lago to Jewish people when they have been shut out. He I know black people no, no, there. No, no, no. He, is, he has also hired African-Americans to work in his organization, to empower them in many ways. Look. Is Donald Trump a perfect man? No, but I don't know who we could afford to put in that job. But I also do feel like that I know him well enough. And if I didn't have some confidence in his integrity, uh, I would never encourage my daughter. But he to says work nicer for him. things about neo Nazis than he does about that's President Obama. That's, no, that's not true. No, that's not true. Yes, it is true. That's, that's true. 
Sarah gets cherry picking true. statements and making them into something they're not. You often hear the line that personnel is policy. You pointed out yourself that I'm the first working mother to ever hold mm -hmm. this job, to be empowered to be the spokesperson for the United States of America through the president. That is a big deal. It that is, is a huge step it is forward. A, a huge and step instead forward, of but and you, instead of liberals celebrating it, no, no, they've no, attacked oh, me at every step. Something? And that's can we, a problem can we do itself. something? There are liberals at the table, so nobody's attacking. So no, no, let's, no, I'm not let's saying, get Sarah, rid of that. But as a, just as a, because okay. you, as not as a politician, not as someone who's in the political sphere, I agree with you that I think Donald Trump has in, in business empowered a lot of women to oh. succeed. I'm glad he gave you this job. I think you're great at this job. But personally, as a person, as a woman, as just a person out there, have you struggled with some of the stuff that he has said? And has that made it harder for you to defend? Maybe, maybe his policy is okay, but the person, the man behind the presidency, is it hard for you sometimes? I've spent a lot of time with the president. I've never felt anything but respected and empowered to do exactly what I'm there to do every day, and that is my job. And, um, I, you know, I think he's an equal opportunity president. He hits men just as hard. Uh, women want equal opportunity, and this president certainly gives it to them, one, by empowering them to take on senior level positions, not just in the White House, but uh, as a business businessman he did that you see that by the time and he doesn't just put milk toast women around him he puts strong very outspoken women uh, in very powerful positions in the first time in history we also have a female communications director you've never had a female press secretary and a female communications director ever in the history of the White House and we do in this one and so I think that there are some things that he's really done uh, to empower women to push that agenda forward and I think that's something that we should look at and, and, I and recognize how the evangelical can support him. You're a religious person. I mean, some of the things that have come out of his mouth are so against the Bible and so unreligious of him. How can you support someone like that? Well, I think it's not, it's not that difficult because, right. well, nobody voted for him to be their Sunday school teacher. Okay, yeah, and, he, and I think the point is, he, he is a defender tall. of religious liberty, which means he doesn't have to embrace everything that I personally embrace in order to believe that people of faith should be respected. And that they should not be relegated to, uh, you know, a let portion just, of the culture. With all due respect, though, let me just say, character does matter. And many of us argued that when it came to Bill Clinton, sure. his character mattered. And that doesn't mean anything different for Donald Trump. But yeah, the character behind right. the presidency does matter. But I do think that there is a character there that does come out in his defense of religious liberty, in his embrace of people. Uh, who are evangelicals. You know, look, I, I, I'm very pro-life. You guys all know that. We've talked about yeah, that on yeah. this show before. Mm -hmm. For me, that is an important issue because it says that the most important way you look at another human being is with respect for their intrinsic worth and value. And I believe Donald Trump does, in fact, look at people with intrinsic worth and value. I really okay. do. I, oh, man. There we are. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Sarah Sanders and Mike Huckabee. We're coming to you, Mike, but hold up. <laughs> yeah, <I'm right. laughs> no, the president has said he has, uh, he's at war with the fake news media. We can agree that this hostile dynamic doesn't serve the American people. We've heard what he and the administration feel the media should be doing or what they're doing wrong, but what do you think is on the responsibility of the administration and people like yourself to help on your end to mend these fences? Yeah, I think going back, you look at every administration, you're always going to have a little bit of friction uh, between the press corps and the White House. Uh, we've certainly seen that escalate uh, in this administration. I think that there is certainly responsibility on both sides. We have to be forthcoming. We have to be honest. That's our obligation to the American people. But it's also journalist obligation to present facts, not opinions. It's the American people's ability to get to take those facts and decide where they want to come down on it. An issue. To me, a good news story is if all the facts are presented and you don't know which side the the author of that story is on. Right. And I think we need to get back to a little bit a little bit less editorial comments from the media and a little bit more uh, fact delivering to the American people. But my clarification here is that when when he refers to the media, that's a massive group of people. Technically, we're media. There are journalists. I feel that by by specifying when there's something wrong, I think that's is a responsibility of the administration because the problem is you have an American people that are now distrusting because this has been a consistent talking point of his and the administration's. It's dangerous because the media is here for a purpose. It has a very important historical role. And when people that don't know the difference in these mediums are sitting out there going, oh, medium, fake news, fake news, you 
are kind of it's taking away a check and balance but in it's, society. It's also very dangerous for the media not to live up to the responsibility that they have, and that is to actually present factual information. But I, I mean, a lot of times to, I sit in a room. When one person does it, I think you need to say, we read this article, and yeah. that is problematic, because there are like thousands of us, and we can only be, do our part individually. Yeah. So when you call out all of us each time, we take the fall for when we do do backup research and yeah. we do present information, you're making us all take that fall. Well, and I think that goes both ways. I mean, the media often characterizes all Republicans, all conservatives, all Democrats. I think that that happens on, certainly on both sides when you take uh, those generalities, and that certainly, I think, is it, a, a give and take, not just from the administration, but also from the news media. I is think, the media supposed to not report on the fact that 95% of what he says is a lie? Well, that's... Is that 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 is a, a that is you are doing exactly what we're talking about in pushing a false narrative. No, it's not. Ninety-five percent of what the president says Politifact. is not a lot. It's from Politifact, well, it's from Politico. Politifact. It's New not York just Times. the dreaded New York Times. It is <laughs> other other outlets that say it. Five percent of his statements are true. Five percent. That's just it's, it. It's, and you, I feel for you. <laughs> I feel sorry for you that you have to go out and defend those lies every that, day. And that has been documented. And so, as the face of really the. the administration, what do you say to the American people when you have a boss that engages in untruths? Well, I, I, again, I, I completely disagree with the fact that what you're saying is only 5% of that is true. I know that that is simply not accurate, and I think that's one of the dangers that we have right now is we are pushing so many false narratives every day. We're creating false perceptions about the president and, frankly, inhibiting his ability to succeed. I think America should want him to succeed. He is the president whether they voted for him or not, and I think that we have to get behind Yes, we should be championing for you're, his you're, success you're because exactly his success correct. is America's success, and he, that's what we should all want. But you time. also have to get somebody in the office who recognizes what the truth is. <laughs> and that, I mean, because, I, and I will take you just to, to one, one point that we can all agree on. Where was President Obama born, and is he an American citizen? I think this line. has been pretty well addressed. Well, as... but, but this narrative, this is what I'm talking about. That's a narrative that went on forever and really didn't get, he didn't clear it up until after he was in office. So there are those things that we could go back and forth with, but I think it would be helpful <laughs> if he... A, would stick to whatever he's decided. Like, last night he tweeted one thing and then he said something else the next morning and it, it's like, it's like, come on, man! Yeah. You know, it's a lot. It's a lot. What, what, what happened yesterday, I, I, I disagree that that was inconsistent messaging. The point of yesterday, you've got a very intense legal battle, uh, and, and the timeline was not set by Donald Trump. It was set by the courts. A decision was forced to be made yesterday. With DACA. You have, with DACA. With you have DACA. one of two choices. Mm -hmm. You can either let the courts decide, which means the program can mend, uh, like end immediately, which mm -hmm. I think the entire country has agreed that that's not a good thing, mm -hmm. including the president. And, or or you can take six months and you can force Congress to actually do their jobs. A lot of people yeah. are protesting Trump Tower. I think they should go pro protest the United States Capitol because those are the people that yes. have the ability to actually make and, laws. And if he and had they come need to out, step up and do their job. If he had come job. out and not said Jeff Sessions that, if he had come out, stood with you, stood Why next to you and Sessions? said, this is, this is just my opinion. If he had stood next to you and said, listen, Congress, you didn't act when you could have acted four years ago, eight years ago. Now I'm demanding that you act. If he had stood with you and said that, and he, I'd feel better. But Jeff Sessions didn't say, well, he didn't it, do it for me. The first step was Jeff Sessions making the legal argument. When President Obama made this decision in 2012, he sent Janet Napolitano. He didn't go out himself no. because that's the first step in the process. He sent the administrator that is responsible for carrying out that duty. That was Jeff Sessions' responsibility. The president put out a very lengthy uh, statement. He'll be out publicly speaking to Today, there is a process that we're going through, and right now, the part of the process that we're in is for Congress. They've been on a three-week vacation. They should be well for rested. Years. They should for be years ready. They've been on a they have. Let me they talk should to Mike. feel ready to come back. Let me talk to Mike. Mike, you know, 
both the president and the vice president, I, I think, visited Texas to see the flooding and the, the devastation. And, and this is the first time I think we saw President Trump in that consoler in chief role. And many people felt better about that. The country has been so divided, and now we see more uh, closeness. We see Americans mm -hmm. being great. However, on the same day when this devastation is set to strike Texas, he pardons Arizona Sheriff Joe Arpaio. He says he pardons him at, on that day to get better ratings since people would be watching hurricane coverage. <laughs> now, as a it's former so government, a, a governor, would you have chosen that particular moment to pardon arguably one of the most racist and racially profiling officials in, in our country? I, I know Joe Arpaio. I, I do not agree that he's that he a, racist. a racist. No, I do not agree. He's He's an 85-year-old he man, and he has been a sheriff, and he has enforced the law in his county. But I, I think to your first point, which I hope Several that we can disagree. emphasize. I, I, listen, we're living in a country where everybody disagrees, okay? okay? Fair. I, I can't hardly find agreement within my own family sometimes. Fair. It's so divided and Fair. polarized. But what you also mentioned was this was a president who not only did the important job of standing up federal resources to assist in Texas, but then he got criticized for not showing enough empathy. He goes back, he hugs people, and then people are saying, we've got to find something to hate this guy for. I mean, I'm, I'm just telling you, the I man don't the could, is actually he really could take good. a drink. I don't drinking, believe him because he lies so much. No one believes also, anything. Take what he does. That's the problem. What he did in that hurricane relief is what's important. And what he did was ensure that every federal agency was fully engaged in helping those people and then that he was giving attention to it on a personal level. But, folks, look, there's so much Trump hate out here that if he took a drinking straw and sucked out every drop of flood water from Houston and spit it into the Gulf of Mexico, they would have said well, he, he should have spit that. it into the I, Indian I, I, have to, I have to say to you, you know, I have to say this to you. This is a gentleman who is now going to learn the cost of cutting all of these programs. programs because these are the programs that we needed, and this is why we needed them. So he'll learn, he'll figure it out, because that's what every president does, right? That's what every president does. They figure it out. But I think he has not done himself a whole lot of good with some of the things he decided to do and how he started all of this. I think that is a lot of what's happening. I actually think that's a great point that I agree with you. He's not looking to better himself. He's making decisions that I think better the American people. Ooh, by making no. government... Oh, wait, wait, oh, what wait, a spin. Wait, by wait, making wait. government work more effectively and more efficiently I, and using I, resources in a more responsible manner, yeah, I don't think that's something that we should... Yeah, and their taxpayer not, dollars. You know, that should be looked at in a go, more We're, we're, uh, oh, we're um, <laughs> We're going to go and come right back, and we're not. They're coming. The torture.